back everybody um got a, a hybrid video today i'm gonna do a pcg mail day and then i'm gonna uh, open up the last box of that case of everfest a uh, few points to discuss today and look at that cracked bubble uh, this is a, a big submission. There's, there's actually three or four submissions in a row that just finally got completed. So we'll go through those. First of all, congrats to all the winners. Um, Isaac E won the Arcane Rising first edition box. Richard Smith, Mateo, Sue, and Keith Gunter won a. Ooh, baby. All right. First one's a 10. We got another 10 alpha bubble. Yep, it is a welcome to Wraith one too. All right, good start to the video. Um, congrats to all the winners. Thanks everyone that's subscribed and um, is following the channel. Next step is 5,000 subs, which will uh, get someone, some lucky person, a first edition alpha box. Ooh, that's a great score on that ancestral empowerment. Some of you might have watched the Alpha Case unboxing stream. Uh, this is some cards from that. Uh, second topic of the day. Today was the Bands and Errata announcement. Uh, short story is nothing happened. Although that's completely untrue. These get identical scores. They did. Look at that. Ooh, nice. Um, so, yeah, basically nothing happened. No changes. Although there was some confusion with an announcement coming and then, uh, look, let me explain this to the new people. Ooh, foil crippling crush 9.5. It's insane. That surface score though. All right, if you're new to the game or new to this in general, <clears throat> the living legend status for a hero is basically when they get enough points, they've won enough events that uh, Legend Story Studios, the company that makes Flesh and Blood, decides to retire at a certain point. Um, in this case, we're talking about Bravo, star of the show, came out in Everfest, has pretty much dominated the classic constructed scene. He's 815 points, and the points he needs to be retired, or living legend status, is 1,000. So the point of today was, are they going to ban him early? Are they going to change his card? Are they going to change cards in his arsenal? Like, what were they going to do? The answer ended up being nothing, right? They did nothing. But then they announced that, you know, there's enough uh, events out there in Classic Constructed that would um, sort of see himself out the door. And then some over people went and did the maths real quick and said, ah, no, 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 it's not possible. Ooh, look at that, Command and Conquer. Um, but then... <laughs> oh, dude, look at these. Wow. Amazing. Um, basically, it seems like L LSS had um, like an announcement for some events adding in a classic constructed event for some of these callings around the world that were um, gonna be blitz only, right? The point is um, a lot of people reacted very quickly, made videos, tweets, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, dude. Cold foil braces of belief, look at that. That could have been so good. So good. Um, basically people reacted and then, and then ended up looking silly when LSS release. Now, did LSS do it on purpose? No, I think people were too worried about the band's announcement to notice that the article came out saying that there were changes to those other callings. Um, but then LSS compounded it by changing their own article a couple of times. Oof, quad 9.5. Short point is nothing's changed, but Starvo, brother star of the show, has the chance to retire himself this is the Dorinthia I play with. I finally wanted to get her graded so I can continue playing with her without ruining the car. So this is, I'm excited to have that um, back. I think we got some bobbles after this. Anyway, guys, nothing's changing with Bravo side of the show. That's the long-winded answer. But he might self-retire, and then that'll be interesting to see what actually happens after that. Because uh, the self-retirement, again, if you're new here, 
uh, living legend status means by the time the next um, big event or next set comes out, uh, no one can play him. That's what that means. I think we got a lot of 9.5 bobbles here. And these are Arcane Rising ones, by the way, that we're opening now. So close. Oh, out of war at the end. Again, some of you might have caught this stream, so you know, you sort of know what you're looking at. I'll put that on the mountain of um okay. That's everything. Let me um let me tidy this up and then I'm gonna grab this Everfest box and talk about the last couple of things we're gonna discuss while I open that. But hopefully that long-winded explanation did explain it for some of you. Now uh, that's what all the hubbub and the fuss is about. Nothing really crazy, it's just the competitive scene, there's some dates coming up, people trying to get ready for their um, relevant uh, events and what the makers of the game want to see happen with a hero that's pretty dominant. This isn't the first time we've had a very dominant hero in the meta, but it's the first time it's been this quick to get Living Legend status, partially because COVID's gone and there's actually a lot of tournaments <clears throat> happening. Uh, I don't think anyone would disagree that the chain meta and the briar meta were more dominant in this particular one anyway last box of this case uh rudy from alpha investors posted an interesting video today he <clears throat> basically is hinting that we are going to see monarch first edition print numbers soon um, very interesting if that does happen, or if he has some inside. Well, I know he has inside information because he's said that he's talked to James White about it, and, and Rudy has been involved in the um, growth of the game from a very early point. So it wouldn't be surprising that uh, him and James White have conversations about this stuff. It's actually, I like it. It's kind of cool because if anyone knows a lot about card game economics, it would be. Rudy from Alpha Investments. Either way, Rudy's hinted that the Monarch print numbers are coming. I get asked this all the time. What's your bet on the Monarch print numbers? A cold for oblation. I honestly don't care. Um, I don't buy to hold. I don't buy to flip. So, you know, if my few cases of Monarch first edition skyrocket in value, great. Will it change how I do things? I mean, only if it goes up to like thousands, I might sell some, but I don't think it will like skyrocket. I think it will just maybe give it a big bump up or a, sorry, a small bump or a small bump down. But we'll see. I don't have any expectations, although the information will be cool, especially if they uh, add it in with the Fab 2.0 announcement and the Tales of Aria. Because Monarch is one thing, Tales of Aria is a whole nother beast. Um, both those sets, um, sorry, they had very different, different releases. Like Tales of Aria really didn't go anywhere as a first edition product. It's first edition, but really very few of the cards are collectible. It's, it was the first set where the common cold foils just had no value. And, and I'm interested to see what, um, if the print numbers were that different uh from monarch for instance or crucible of war but i don't have a guess per se i'm more curious i'm a spectator for this stuff so you and i will find out when we find out in other news got a tracking number so sometimes when people send you a parcel they put your details in for the tracking to be sent to and today ooh, spring tidings foil Today, I got a, a tracking number uh, from Legend Story Studios. As try as I might, no one will tell me what it is at Legend Story Studios. And then I heard uh, in on the grapevine that we're, there, there's a couple of content creators that also got a tracking number today. So if it's the dual decks, if I get to spoil something with that, if I get to maybe... Um, you know, open it and play a game against someone with the new decks without having spoilers or seen it. I mean, all of that's really exciting to me. So time will tell. Uh, you'll know when I know. But that's the weird thing is I haven't received an email from LSS to tell me that I'm involved in anything because usually they 
well, last time, I shouldn't say usually because it's new to me, but last time they did send me like an NDA type thing, <clears throat> you know, asking me not to spoil stuff. I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> all that drama, if people have forgotten, but either way, it'd be interesting to see what's coming and how relevant it is for you guys. I can't imagine there's anything like for me personally, I'm, I'm, I'll be fairly certain it's something to do with the game promoting a product maybe actually isn't there a product release that they still haven't announced yet so maybe that's what they're sending is something about the one missing product release for april yeah now that i think of it that would be it high striker yellow extended art's a good hit i need me some red ones for my facade deck payload Hope everyone's doing well. A uh, few packs left and then I'll sign off. I don't have much else to talk about. That were, They were the topics. I think it's interesting to see. Oh, that's right. That's the little comment I'll make about this Bands and Arata thing. Two things I noticed. One is um, Team Covenant made an excellent video about this. And I covered this already in my in my my video about what their opinions were on Bands and Aratas Or what they thought should happen with Starvo. And one of the best things was, wouldn't it be cool to see... All the best players in the world have to solve problems like a week or two out of uh, Pro Tour. Like if the meta is completely fresh going into the Pro Tour. And, and I agree, that'd be absolutely insane to see like people playing. You know, imagine seeing like someone like Hayden Dale play uh, Reinhardt at the Pro Tour. Something I don't think he's represented at a high level. Um, like, you know, Nationals, he played Viserai. And I, I don't think he's played rhino and like a pro quest or anything um the second thing is talking about hayden dale what's funny was to see everyone sort of react and tweet and meme and all that but then you had um yuki who's the canadian national champion and hayden who's the australian national champion both like well yuki said it and hayden agreed in a tweet that it might just be best to wait and reflect before like commenting on the on the fact that lss didn't ban or rata anything and then, of course, not even half an hour after this stuff, LSS show that, yes, Starvo may self-retire because they're changing the rules for some of the events. Like, that um, temperament of not overreacting, and someone said this today, so I'll repeat it in his words. I'm sure he doesn't want to be named, though. <laughs> it was like like the be like water mentality, like just go with the flow or, or just adapt. is good to see from, like, a high-level representation in the game. Um, <laughs> like if you've met Hayden, he's a pretty chill guy. I think that really helps him win and helps him play because he's unlikely to make like a rash decision or an emotional one. And Yuki must be the same because uh, Yuki said the same. Well, started by saying, "Might just be best to wait." I like that. I like that. I think it's probably a good thing to follow if you're trying to be a successful competitive player. Is to just maybe ease back and wait. Especially, or like, don't think rashly, I think is the best way to say it. Anyway, uh, that's it for me. Talk soon.